Today, I want to talk to you about being misunderstood. It happened to everyone, right? Probably in running a text or an email or even in a conversation. One way or another, we've been misinterpreted. Raise your hand if this has happened to you at least once. I see the room full of hands. Well, I, mean, I want to take you in a journey about misunderstanding. I want to, t to rewind a few years back and show you a boy. This boy was not like the rest. He did not understand happiness or anger. He was not afraid or brave. He followed all the rules. He was respectful, he was friendly, he was curious, and he was just there. He walked fine, he seemed fine, he looked fine, yet deep inside he was anything but fine. This boy could travel at the speed of light without leaving his seat. He could fly without wings and reach for the brightest of stars. This boy had the loudest of voices, but was only heard as a whisper. This boy believed in a community where everybody could be themselves. Yet he was unaware of the dangers and rules of social interaction. And so he was exposed. So this boy might seem like it comes from a story, just a tale, but he is very real. I was that boy. Normally, I would get trapped inside of my head. I would try to say something with the many ideas I had, but I had poor communication skills, and so I was misunderstood. The reason for this is because of a condition called Asperger's Syndrome. And I was diagnosed with this condition at the age of 12. Asperger's Syndrome is part of the aut autism spectrum disorder and the high-functioning side of it. Us with Asperger's syndrome call ourselves Aspies, although we're also referred as neurodiverse or NDs, while mo normal people, which I suppose is most of the audience, to be neurotypicals or NTs. Most of us Aspies share three common traits, despite being very different ourselves. Here are the three. Oh, right, over here. Here are the three. The first one is our sensory function. When we, f when we get to feel something, we normally feel that, oh, there's, we, I feel cold here, it must be cold. But with us, it, we tend to over-sense things. They're not, we are, our senses are not, are not stronger, but we get, to, we get too much information into our brain, and we enter panic attacks. For example, when rubbing my skin with a sponge, it feels like a thousand needles. And so began my fear of SpongeBob. The second one is motor skills. We tend to be more awkward when moving, and this also means that we tend to be bad at sports. But if we put some effort, we can reach the professional level. Social interaction. This is the one that actually does define us all. We do not have the ability to see if someone is sad, if someone's happy, if someone's angry. It takes us a little bit longer to identify that. And normally, when people see us like this, they think we're cold people, or that we don't have any empathy. Having this condition meant that I was misunderstood by my peers, by my teachers, and even by my parents. I still am getting better into trying to understand how neurotypicals work, and I'm also trying to hide untold truths. So let me, get, let me get back to the boy. Oh. That's weird. Oh. Oops, pressing the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> so as in a, in a younger age, during elementary, I would often get bullied. I would sometimes be called out, be ignored, rejected, and even in some cases, physically hurt. So, I'll tell you a story from
from when I was in fourth grade in a group project. We were studying electricity, and our project involved connecting batteries with wires to light bulbs. I was very excited to contribute, but as it turns out, I still couldn't express my ideas fully, and again, I was misunderstood. And so I ended up being placed in trash duty. When it came time to present our project, my team didn't even bother mentioning my name. But I know it wasn't only their fault, it was mine as well. Because mis misinterpretation is not something that goes only one way, but rather both. I misunderstood them, and they misunderstood me. And this story means, it just signifies how I was misunderstood for most of my life. And there are many other, many other people who are different, although do not have Asperger's syndrome, yet they are treated in the same horrible way. They are casted aside and, or placed on the sidelines simply because they're not like the rest. Although I've come a long way from the boy who sat at his desk, looked at the window, and traveled to faraway lands, I'm still not a neurotypical person. I'm never going to be and I'm more than okay with that. But even if my differences are just small, minuscule, maybe not even seen by most people, the consequences of those differences are not so little. We have to be, uh, again, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> we have to be more tolerant, more open. We have to be better. We just have to be. So if you're a little bit different, if you're not mainstream, that just means that you're capable of doing things differently. We were not given the same attributes, the same abilities, the same appearances, or the same mindsets. We were made differently. We have different tools. And if we use these tools correctly, we can make a great community where everybody can be themselves and accomplish the dream of the boy that I once was. Once, when I was beginning to write this talk, I was asked, what do you wish had been different? What do you wish you could change? And I answered, I wish somebody would have spoken out for me when I couldn't. I wish somebody would have just said, that is enough. So if you happen to stumble upon someone like me, I just ask you to carry the following message. Be tolerant, be forgiving, be their voice until they can be their own. I hope my small differences can have a lasting impact on you. Thank you.